Hey guys, how's it going? So today it's going to be my review of Volume 4 of uh, Something's Killing the Children. Um, I'm still trying to work out logistics of how I'm going to shoot this. Um, but I like I think I like doing it this way when I'm reviewing a book. Uh, I know I can't really flip through the pages because it's just going to take too much. But you can just look at the cover and you can listen to me talk. But uh, anyway, so with Volume 4 picking up, it takes... Uh, I hate prequels. I'm just going to say this out. Right beginning. Uh, some people love prequels. Some people hate prequels. I am the person that hates prequels. Um, I love how the writer James kind of takes everything. But I wish he would have... Like, there's three volumes before this. I wish he would have took elements of each uh, of, of this book and put it into volumes one, two, and three. And that way, you can skip this. You don't need this. This is a like a really bad filler. Now, the story is not bad, but it's just, it, it doesn't need to exist. It really doesn't. Um, you, you know what happens to Aaron. You know what happens to Erica. Uh, this person is new. She's Her name's Jesse, and she gets basically introduced as Erica's handler as the leader of the Black Mass. Now, with the, black, with the Mass in the House of Slaughter, you have the Black Ones that are basically solos. Uh, they're lone wolves, and then you have the white ones, which work in packs, and they're a bunch of dicks. I'm just going to say this. They are dicks to the black wolves, um, and I don't know why, because I would be more timid with uh, talking down to a black mask than anything, because they go out there by themselves, and they kick ass. Like, you got to have balls of steel to go out with and go up against some sort of monster. Um, there are uh, scarlets. Which is basically they keep track of everybody. Uh, they help out with house stuff and uh, kind of like Alfred. I want to say in Batman, it's probably the best way I can think of it. Um, there are the blue masks, which are tech guys. Um, there is a um, character in here called Eric, which they do introduce, and he kind of uh, brings everything together, brings uh, the host and uh, Erica together, and it's it's a whole other thing and i don't want this video to be 20 minutes i really don't and then there's the silver silver f fights like werewolves and vampires i would love to see werewolves and vampires in this and then this is probably the coolest coolest uh color of all it's the emeralds and they fight friggin dragons i would love to see erica team up with an emerald to fight a friggin dragon that would be awesome i would love that um, hopefully their design's a lot better than the monsters in these books. <laughs> but, uh, I don't want to crap on this book. I really don't. I, I love Volume 4. I don't like the prequel part of it. But I do love how, um, Jessie is such a mess. Um, she is a badass. Yes, she is. And she did save Erica. But she is just this alcoholic. Like, she is broken. She is such a broken woman. And she is so frightful of Erica because she wasn't supposed to bring Erica into the House of Slaughter. She was just supposed to basically leave her there. But um, she saw something in Erica and she brought her in. Um, the leader, Cecilia, of the white... Blah, blah, blah. The white... Uh, <laughs> the white mask. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. Kind of uh, criticizes her for bringing Erica in because she knows that Erica is, is probably going to die in the initiation where she's bonded to the monster. Um, <clears throat> which is really cool how they did that. It's kind of, it doesn't come out and try to kill her. It goes into her, Erica's head and tries to trick her and try to eat her from the inside out. So she's trying, uh, the beast is, uh, trying to take over her mind and it's a very unique way to do it. And, you know, Erica beats it because you, you've seen her in the last three volumes. She's grown up. So, Again, this is kind of pointless, but I do I I do respect it, but I just don't like it. Uh, I think that's the problem with some of these uh, prequel stuff is I respect, but I don't like. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's a like all in all, it's it's a great book. I, I there's nothing really wrong about it. Um, you know, the introduction to Aaron, introduction to Aaron. You know, he's basically goes like. It's nice because he's basically the only black mask there. He has not killed a monster yet, so it's just a basic white black mask. Um, but once uh, you do, you get your teeth. Uh, here's Eric. He's doing his thing. 
So you got the blue mask there. And uh, Jesse shows up and they do the ritual. Uh, the ritual is pretty badass. I, I, I will agree to that one. I do like that one. But um, the art is still beautiful. I am not... I'm still not crazy about the the whole um, design of the monsters, but whatever. And the white masks, the white wolves are, are dicks to Aaron. And Aaron just kind of just takes it. But anyway, yeah. So all in all, it's not a bad, bad book. I just, ugh, I, I just feel like it's kind of a waste. Um, especially for this big of a volume. They could have done like glimpses throughout the first three, but whatever. You got to pen your your stuff out, I guess. So, um, yeah. Check out Something is Killing Children, Volume 4. Uh, I would give it about a 6. That seems about fair for, for me. It could be higher for other people that that like this kind of stuff. But for me, you know, eh, I can take it or leave it. You don't really need to read Volume 4. You can basically skip it if you want. If you don't care about how Erica grew up in House of Slaughter. But, uh... Yeah, that's it anyway, guys. So leave me a comment down below. Throw me a like. If you have not subscribed, please do. And as always, guys, I love you, and I will talk to you later. Oh, my God, I'm done.